Opposition to Andy Puzdert was pretty standard from the beginning, focusing on his record on issues he'd face as Labor Secretary, but then it brought it out to include his complicated finances and a messy divorce that happened some 30 years ago. Republican support eventually eroded to the point where it was unclear whether his nomination would find support in the Senate, much less the committee slated to hold his hearing today. Now, interestingly, you did see some commentary from the Republican community. Senator Marco Rubio sent out a tweet commending Puzder for withdrawing, and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell in a statement saying, quote, I'm confident he will continue to find ways to contribute his time and talent to have a positive impact on our nation. For Puzder, he'll return to his role as chief executive of fast food company CKE. Now, a firm shortlist for replacement nominees has yet to emerge, but some names reported in the wake of Puzder's re resignation include National Labor Relations Board members Peter Kersenow and Alexander Acosta, Catherine Templeton, who ran South Carolina's Labor Department under Governor Nikki Haley, and Joseph Guzman, a professor of labor relations at Michigan State who advised Trump uh, during the campaign. Now, it's a different group than was rumored and reported in November before Trump actually picked uh, Andy Puzder for that nomination. One of those uh, reported names back then was Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker. We reached out to his office yesterday, and a spokesperson said he has absolutely no interest. Wilfred? Uh, Kayla, as you said, uh, another blow, I suppose, to uh, Washington, the, the White House administration this week uh, with this latest development. But... Uh, as you also said, he was facing quite significant opposition to get his confirmation uh, pushed through either way. Uh, is there more focus, therefore, on who might replace uh, Mike Flynn as national security advisor than this Labour secretary potential uh, replacement? Well, that has already really been in the works, Wilfred, throughout the week. Um, you had an acting NSA basically put in place right away. And then there were some reports overnight that there's already been a replacement for General Flynn uh, that has been chosen. In Washington, there's going to be a lot of focus today on two things. Number one, at 1030, you have a vote in the Senate on uh, Mick Mulvaney. He's a South Carolina congressman. He's a Tea Party member, and he's one of the co-founders of the House Freedom Caucus. And he's nominated for the director of Office of Management and Budget. And interestingly, there has been some notable Senate opposition to him, despite the fact that he's been a working congressman since 2011, notably last night, Senator John McCain said he doesn't believe that uh, Mulvaney would be behind expanding the military at the same time as putting the country on a sustainable fiscal path. So that is something to watch if uh, Republican support erodes for that candidate. And then at 2.30, the president is going to be meeting with the uh, attorney general, Jeff Sessions. And with all of these reports about a potential lack of trust between the intelligence community and the president, that's going to be a focus as well as a potential new draft for that immigration executive order. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.